This is the third in a series of three videos showing the functionality of the USGS Sediment Data Portal. In this video, we will show the data contained within the files that you downloaded from the portal. Now let's take a look at the data we downloaded. Uh, today I'm going to use Microsoft Excel to show our data just because it's, it's useful for that purpose. But you can use a variety of software packages to open up and interpret your data. So if you remember, if you remember I put my data in a folder um, in a, my, my documents folder called said portal download. I'll click there. Um, you'll see that I have four files in, in my folder. Sometimes Microsoft Excel will display no files because it's default is all Excel files. Just note that you need to go into all files to display your data. And you can see the four files that we downloaded earlier. Let's go and open up daily data. And, and a text import wizard pops up. Um, we picked a tab separated file so we can uh, hit next and you can see that the tab delimiter is selected by default because Microsoft Excel recognizes this as a tab separated file. So you'll just go over and hit finish and we can see our file. So these first uh, 18 lines are header information. Uh, this first row is a disclaimer. Uh, this third row indicates that whenever we have a new site, so we downloaded three sites, that the new site will be delimited by this long series of pounds, um, the indicator new site, and another long series of pounds. That's important because sometimes either daily flow or daily sediment concentration and or daily sediment load information will be available. And if different uh, amounts of data are available, sometimes these columns could change. So you need to make sure you're aware of that. It gives definitions for the fields. So we have agency ID, which is typically the USGS, will be USGS who collected the data. Uh, USGS site number. Note that within Excel, uh, the site number field is recognized as a number, and so the leading zero is dropped. That won't always be true with other uh, software applications. Um, you get a date time, so this is daily data, so we just have a date. I get daily flow information in cubic feet per second, and a daily flow qualifier, which indicates that these data are approved. We get daily suspended sediment load information for this site um, in tons per day, and the qualifier for those data. So you're probably observing that we don't have any sediment load information initially, but we do have flow information. This will often be the case when you download daily, daily data because typically the stream gauge will have been operational before sediment load uh, or sediment concentration information has been collected. And so, uh, so in, in the way we download data, we get all the daily flow information. So let's go to sediment load here, hit control down. And we'll scroll down to the first sediment load entry. As you can see, on October 1st of 1969, we give one ton per day, and that data is approved. I'll control down again, and that should take us to the end of the sediment load information in 1974. If I control down one more time, it will take us to our a new site. And what you can see down here is we have a different USGS station ID, but that we have more information on uh, more daily information. So in this case we also have daily suspended sediment concentration and the qualifier for sediment concentration and that our load information moved out here to the right. Um, so you can see that the fields change. Fields F and G in Excel here change from load to concentration. Hopefully in future versions we will have this stick so they will always be in the same column but uh, it was, it's rather complicated. So to go down and look at our new site, just hit control down on sediment concentration. And you can see that our first data entry is in 1957. We have a suspended sediment concentration of 113 milligrams per liter, and the 3.1 tons per day were transported for this concentration and this flow value. So now let's go look at our discrete data. Let open. I will go back to my said portal download folder and I'll click on discrete data. Again, we can just hit finish because it will 
Excel will find the tabs. Move my window a little bit. You can see we have a much more, much longer header because we have a lot more information um, with our discrete data so going down to line 52. So the information we have includes information on the USGS site number, USGS station name, the date and time of sample collection. These D comments and I comment fields are quality control codes. Um, look into the user guide for more information on those. Uh, so spin and sediment concentration, information on daily or instantaneous stream flow, gauge height. Uh, rows 13 through 23 are various categories of suspended sediment grain size information. We have loss on ignition. Uh, TSS and SS are different ca uh, codes for suspended solids. Uh, rows 27 through 32 are various information on how the sample was collected, the method, the purpose, and type of sample, etc. Uh, we have width and velocity. Uh, we have turbidity codes um, from 35 to 41 that indicate different measures of turbidity, water temperature, air temperature, different measures of specific conductance, dissolved solids, pH, and in some cases um, there are samples that have end dates and end times which generally are samples that have been collected over a long period of time, but this is relatively rare. And then down below this you can see our data and see the date time as a specific date and time stamp. For the discrete data, um, there is no, all the data are in the same row. So you, as you scroll down here, if you hit control down, you will see that um, we have a new site ID, but the station numbers will, will just change here in, in, in column A. There's no new identifier because all the same data are in the same columns. Now let's go look at our site attribute information. Go back to my site portal download. I'll click on daily sites. Um, again, daily sites and discrete sites will contain the same type of information, but they just correspond to daily sites correspond to sites in the daily data folder. Discrete sites correspond to sites in the discrete data file. So again, just hit finish. move the location of my window. Okay, so there are a lot of data in our site attribute file. Um, so these include information on site number, site name, latitude, longitude, upstream drainage area, state, county name. We have both the codes and names for level one, two, and three ecoregions. We have the codes and names for HUC two, four, and six codes, so uh, the region, subregion, bas basin, and subbasin. And then we have uh, average upstream uh, characteristics, uh, landscape characteristics. So this is information, average upstream information soil, on soil permeability, base flow index, uh, soil erodibility, which is the K factor, rainfall runoff factor, average, average precipitation from 1971 to 2000, percentages of urban, forest, and agricultural land use. The number of major dams, um, as identified by the National Inventory of Dams, and you can see there's a specific categorization for what is or isn't a major dam. The total National Inventory of Dam storage in acre feet. Uh, percentage of clay, sand, silt on average in the upstream basin. This benchmark indicates whether the site selected is a USGS hydrologic benchmark site. And then all of these NHD rows from column from rows 39 to 53 indicate uh, daily flow percentiles and then we also have the number of years uh, samples were collected in the case of daily data and the sample count in the case of discrete data and scrolling down you can see the three daily sites that we had selected so that is the end of the demonstration on what the data looked like that you downloaded Thank you for taking the time to learn more about the USGS Sediment Data Portal. Again, to get to the portal, go to ceda.usgs.gov backslash sediment. To get to the associated report, go to pubs.usgs.gov backslash ds backslash 776.